Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Atlantic City. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth. I've got Jacob Van Loonen with me. It's round 14, one more round of Swiss after this. And this is a huge matchup here. Number 24 in the world, Alexander Hainan, 11 and two, facing down Daniel, Daniel Cicchetti. Both of these players are GP champs. Alex, even a pro tour champion. And you know what needs to happen here? They need to win. If the loser of this match is effectively eliminated from top eight contention, so this is gonna be a big one. And we got a cool start here from Cicchetti. Myth realized on turn one. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see where that goes. I am too. All right, Harold of Dromica there for Daniel Cicchetti is gonna complete the one-two punch for him here as Alexander Haynes serves in with Wandering Champion, an easy trade for Cicchetti as uh, he's gonna take out the three-one with that. Ooh, but that's gonna set up a nice one. Dromica captain here for Alexander Hain. And that's the kind of card that demands an immediate response from Daniel. Now, it doesn't have to be removal, but it's gonna have to be a decent creature here because once the counters start flowing on that captain, it gets it, out of control. It gets out of control pretty quickly. And what's pretty fun about the captain is that you, he, you see how Hain offers the trade before he plays the captain, gets the trade that he wants, then he gets to play a captain into an empty board. Ooh, and the board stayed empty here. Daniel Cicchetti has no play for the turn. And there's a trigger, a bolster, and the captain's already a 2-2 first strike, and it's hitting Daniel. He doesn't seem to have anything, so he's gonna have to recover quickly here, and that's really tough to do against the Dromica captain. All right, now Absolutely. a Mardu scout is gonna help Alex uh, diversify his threats as we see Daniel Cicchetti activate Myth, Re Myth Realize at the end to put a lower counter on it. So if he activates it, it would be a 1-1 one -one at this point. At least he gets to use up his mana, though not really in the way that he wanted to. Ooh, nice hand there for Alex Hain. He has War Flare, which works really well with the first strike on the captain. He has uh, Fierce Invocation, which is nice and on curve. He's able to draw another land. Okay. And then he has a Tail Slash. Very nice. Is, tail Slash is going to come in handy really here. Nicely here. Yeah, it's going to kill the. Uh, it, it could and probably will kill the Misfire Adept here, which is serving as just a 3 3 blocker. But, you know, this is kind of what we were talking about. If, if Alex hadn't have played the Mardu Scout, that captain could just attack freely. Now, as it stands, he's probably going to be incentivized to use his Tail Slash to get it out of the way, in which case he's going to be crunching for what, six damage? That's a lot. Ouch. Yeah, and the Mardu Scout's getting bigger and bigger as well. So that's what I would assume the play is. Ooh, I like this play too, though, because this, this play lets him use his mana more efficiently. Uh, Tail Slash is a card that, you know, the longer you hold on to it, the better it becomes. It can take out some really high quality creatures. Right. So he's, he's going for a... He can War Flare he can if war the flare. captain gets blocked. Yeah. And if the uh, Marty Scout gets blocked, he, he's fine with that trade. That's it's right. Trade for him. And this is actually pretty cool. I agree with you. It's more mana efficient and also it gets in more damage here. Yeah. This absolutely. gets in for six damage. So he's keeping the damage flowing and killing a creature at the same time. He's even managed to leave up blockers. Doesn't look super relevant here, but pretty nice. Yeah, that's that's a real good turn for Alex Hain. Now, what is Daniel gonna do here? Well, he's gotta have something. Soltai Skull Keeper is what he's got. He's also got Artful Maneuver in his hand. Well, this tech looks pretty good, but maybe, I don't know, maybe we're seeing the low end of it because I'm not blown away by this by any stretch. Yeah, me neither. Glaring Aegis, Myth Realize is okay. Maybe it's just not a great draw for his deck, or maybe somebody got a little too excited. Well, I think <laughs> I think that Glaring Aegis in the right aggressive deck mm -hmm. is an extremely powerful card. And I think that I, I think it's underestimated. I mean, we spoke about this earlier. I think yeah. you, you don't value it as I'm much not a big fan, as yeah. I do. In the meantime, Alex is going to keep his threats diverse here. Marty Scout's going to pick up a second counter. He could put it on either. He decided to put it on the Scout. And that's that's going to get it big enough to get by the Sultai Skullkeeper. Absolutely. And uh, the captain already has first strike, so he doesn't have to worry about that trading. But Myth realized still just a 1-1 one -one even if it gets activated, so not a big deal. So can Chiketti find a way, even through Alexander Haynes' open removal, to use this pump spell effectively? No, right? The Tail Slash yeah, just the Tail Slash it. just yeah. blanks it, and that's one of, one of the reasons why playing that Warp player there was so good while Cicchetti was tapped yeah. out. Because Cicchetti, what he wants to do is he wants to block the Scout and pump, or excuse me, drop, block the Captain, right? That would actually make it up to three toughness. So anyway, he wants to block and pump, but this is just going to fail horribly for him here. 
And not only that, but the uh, the maneuver then gets countered. That's he right. Get the rebound. No on rebound. That. Not that it would matter because he wouldn't have a guy in play. No, but, but it's, it's noteworthy. Yeah. I mean, Myth realized he won't get another counter. It'll get one more now, but it won't get another one. It won't get turn. the bonus counter. That's right. All right, tail slash to kill your guy, and uh, Mithraelize picks up that counter, but down it goes in a good old-fashioned two-for-one there. Now, this is all before blocks, and Daniel could activate his Mithraelize. Still just a two-two, though, and doesn't have an effective block. And and that could have been now. it. I mean, that could have been, you know, the game-winning play there for Alexander Hain. He has got Daniel Cicchetti pinned down here, and he's really curved out nicely, using up all of his mana and getting through for a bunch of extra damage every turn. What do we got here, Shiketi? All right, that wasn't perfect. Ojitai Monument, he's got one card left, and his Myth Realized is now up to three. He can activate it to give it four counters and then activate it to make it a creature to block. So he's close, close to yeah. stabilizing with the big Myth Realized, but if any one little thing goes wrong, Alex just gets it. But right now, that could hold off at least the Dromic Captain. And it does. So oh. now this is an interesting choice. I wonder if Chiquetti just is, is incentivized to just trade here. He would be able to untap and have the Ojitai Monument for blocks, assuming he has nothing else in his hand. So he might just have to go for that here. I think the trade here is warranted. Yeah, Chiquetti down to seven, and yeah, he's just going to block the pass priority, and sure, all right. So he gets that thing out of the way. And then we, we, we noted earlier that, he, that Alex has a Fierce Invocation. He's going to fire that off here. Yeah, Ooh. it was, a, it was an Atarka Freed. Yeah, okay. it totally was. I know you saw it too. Yeah, I was like, was, was that what it was? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Atarka Freed's pretty good and gets two plus one one counters too. Yes. <laughs> And it would end up with three total, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's even bigger. This is going to be a fun turn. Yeah. I mean, this could just be lethal. End. I mean, it depends on what if Daniel decides to block the captain, which seems to be the right play. I think he just yeah. has to risk it, and he's just dead. Yeah, it's the end. Z dun, 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 zap dun, you dun. for one, you take eight. Yeah, sure. I wouldn't zap that anyway. Let's not handshake yet, though, gentlemen. We've still got another game, or maybe even two to play, but Alex does pick up the first one against Daniel Cicchetti, who had maybe not the best draw for his deck. I'm not sure. I mean, he drew lands and spells. He got to play stuff. Yeah. Alex's draw looked great. I mean, yeah, that was Alex's just a scary was deck. Fun. Yeah. Get yeah, ahead, you know, stay the, ahead. The best blue-white deck I've seen so far? I don't know. Going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to... Pull on a lawyer up. team real quick. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on that one as we jump back over to... No, this is still our sideboarded, our sideboarding. Hot sideboarding action here. Other, other, deck, other table shuffling. That's the uh, David Ochoa match versus Chris Fennell. Looks like Fennell is up a game over there, right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Fennell had secure the waste with great teacher's decree. Ooh, nice little one-two punch. That's a combo. Yeah. And that puts Chris Finnell up a game here. Now, I know that a few of you had asked for Luis Scott Vargas updates. I've got our best man on the job. Brian David Marshall is out there scouring, looking for updates at the top tables, including LSVs and the other ones around it, and he'll be bringing us uh, updates whenever anything happens there. And... Uh, you know, there's a lot of great matches happening out there in our in our feature in our not feature match area too. This tournament is shaping up really well. And just look at this, people playing for top eight right now. We have somebody who just won a Grand Prix, you know, a month and a half ago, mm -hmm. playing against multiple time Grand Prix champion, yeah, Pro Tour champion. You know. I know. That twenty four next to Alex Kane's name. That means out of the millions, maybe tens of millions of magic players in the world. There are only 23 people who right now can reliably say that, you know, they do better at Magic tournaments than Alex Hain. At least so. over the last couple of years. Yeah. All right, let's jump over and check out David Ochoa versus Fennell. It's 
like Chris has started things off with a soul summons, but an anticipate. Ocho really likes anticipate. We've seen him play a lot of those in the feature match area here. And why not? It's a good card. Helps get you through that library, especially when you've got some really nice top end cards that are worth finding. Ochoa, you know, he just hasn't really been doing that well lately. And uh, he's been trying to kind of break that streak. And this is a chance for him to do that. If he can defeat Chris Finnell and then win his last round, he'll find himself in the top eight. That's a bunch of pro points for a full time professional magic player like David. That's a very nice whisk away, putting that land on the top of Finnell's library. I, then again, we don't know if Finnell needs the fourth land still at this stage. Of the game. Here's a Sandcrafter Mage for Finnell to follow up. Sandcrafter Mage, so good. Very solid. You know, you get, either get a 3 3 for 3, or you know, you get a hasty point of power along with a 2 2. It's pretty nice. <laughs> for those of you that were watching with us earlier, this looks very similar to, to Ochoa's last deck. Yes. Blue White Gurmog Drowner dot deck. And there's a Lotus Path gen for Finel, who just has to pass the turn back, but gets to keep developing his board here. The Drown are doing good work. I mean, holding back a Sandcrafter Mage is a big deal. This is land number five for Ochoa, which is immediately going to put Enduring Victory into the head of Chris Finel as a possibility here. So let's see how he manages this situation. David Ochoa, uh, he's got an Avon Surveyor. You got a feel for him in this game. I mean, Finel went two drop with Soul Summons, three drop with Sand Master yeah, Mage. Wow, two, three, four, four drop, five. You're Lotus right. Path Gen, five drop Avon Surveyor, and high quality cards in each of those slots. You're right. You know, Very like when you go two, three, with. four, five, that's brutal. You usually don't lose those yeah, games. I, I'm really frustrated when my opponent gets to do that to me. Because <laughs> they're so lucky. <laughs> they're so lucky. <laughs> All right, Finel says. Heck with it, I'm attacking with both, and Ochoa takes it. So Finel can breathe a sigh of relief. He really thought he was going to get Enduring Victory there, and he didn't. And now the damage is going to start flowing in a big way. The only thing Finel has to think about now is a card like not that. Pristine Skywise is a nice one. It holds the board. Uh, oh no, it does not. Oh my goodness. Avon Surveyor number two. Bounces it out of the way. Are you sure people that weren't saying clears... that Chris Finnell had the best blue white deck? No, I'm that sure what they were deck. saying. I, I don't know if anybody had seen it, but his deck looks unbelievable. And he's going to be on the verge of knocking David Ochoa out of contention for top eight here. All right, I got an update. Luis Scott Vargas got it. That's the whole what, match. That's what he said. He said LSV got it. That means that he won his match, I'm assuming. All right, it does not look like our life totals are updated here. But it doesn't matter. Chris Finnell wins the game. And the match. And the match. So very easily to that game, he had the great draw. Two, three, four, five, five. You're dead. Yeah, not even a sixth land. No, didn't need it. Yeah. Who needs Just it? how you write it up. And that's, that's going to do it for David Ochoa. Now, he does have one more round to play where he's going to be playing, uh, you know, for a miracle, but also just for pro points and money. So. He's, you know, still going to have a solid finish here either way at the GP, but he's got to be disappointed to not make the top eight. As uh, he really could use one, you know, he yeah. really could could use a top eight on his season this year. I should be just well the next PT. You should what? I think he's he's just going to crush the next PT. He's due. Yeah. I mean, I know that's not how it works. Yeah, that's not how it works. <laughs> that's just not how it works. But like, uh, you just wait for him because he's definitely ready. All right, back to business here. Alexander Hain, he's actually tied at number 24 in the world. Did you know that, Jake? I did not know that. Who ben Stark. Ben, ben, ben Stark. Stark. Anytime you're tied with Ben Stark at Magic, you're doing just fine. Absolutely. And an aggressive start here from Daniel Cicchetti with a Dragon Hunter. You know, Alex really beat him down last game while well, Cicchetti had some kind of mediocre stuff going on, but not this game. Wow, one into two. If Alex has a slow start, he could find himself way behind here. Colagon Aspirant, not bad. It trades. It trades. It's a little... You'd rather be attacking with it, but here he finds himself on the draw, facing down four power on turn two, and Chiquetti just says, yeah, well, whichever one you want to trade for. Lightwalker's a bigger problem down the line, so he's going to trade off for that one and take two damage. What's the follow-up for Chiquetti? This is a big turn for him as well. That a monastery that's mentor? a monastery mentor. He's not going to lead with oh, it, though. He's going to play an outcast first. I like that. How, have you ever lost a game where you cast against the backcast yeah, on turn three? Of course, of course. <laughs> no, I know. Not that often. Not that often. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think also Cicchetti, it, it's in his best interest to try to get the Mentor down when he can cast a spell that turn, if his curve allows. He's got a bit of a mono white curve going here, and it looks like Alex on mono red is just going to get beaten down. Is this a twin bolt? No, it's a rending volley that I that he brought in out of the board, and Jan Daniel Cicchetti is going to pat himself on the back for not just running his Monastery Mentor into that, though I think he's out of plays, and he's got to do it. So here's Monastery Mentor. It survives. The end step, does it survive the turn? Alex screwed on mana here. He doesn't have enough colors or enough mana, and this is going to get out of hand. And there's a blue, oh, an island right off the top for Cicchetti so that he can play that Misfire Adept in his hand. In the meantime, two, four, five damage compiling in, and we're going to see a quick game here. Alex having mana troubles while Cicchetti curves out on him. Yeah. This curve. I think at this point, Alex might just be... Uh, gathering intel for game three because he bricked again. Yes, still no white man on Alex's end. Yeah, he, he didn't he didn't pick up land. So far, just two spells so far this game from Alex. And Daniel, hey, we talked about curving out just the last game we watched. Daniel here went, you know, one, two, three, three, four. And that's it. Daniel Cicchetti evens things up, and we're going to get a match. A little smile on his face there, and why not? That looked like a good That was a deck. pounding. I guess Monastery Mentor is uh, something we didn't know about. Yeah. It's a pretty good one. Yeah, if, we, if that was game one, we might just be raving about. <laughs> yeah. Glaring Age is also pretty good with Monastery Mentor. Yeah, good point. Yeah, we also got to see a Sand Step Out, Cast Adult Chiquetti. Yeah, as many that's of those as I see, the deck starts like common, yeah. yeah, creeping up the charts right there, too. What do you think the best common is in uh, Fate Reforged? What, are, what am in I? This new, in the, the, the new Dragon format. Out of the all of them? Yeah, favorite common in Fate Reforged. What are my choices? Like Reach of Shadows? Is that on the list? Yeah, Reach of Shadows is on that list. You take Reach of Shadows or Sand Step Out Cast? Well, I don't know. It's always pack three. Yeah, it's always pack three, so I guess here. Yeah. It's hard to say. It is hard to say. I like Reach of Shadows. I like Sand Step Outcast a lot. I mean, the removal spells are generally pretty good. You know, Bathe in Dragonfire is fine. Bathe in Dragonfire is quite good. I just like Sand Step Outcast. Oh, that's just so hard to deal with. That card does work. That card does serious work. No doubt about it. Big fan. It's one of those cards where when I cast it on turn three, I feel comfortable, and I never feel comfortable when it comes to matchups. Like I am, I'm the most like nervous, fidgety Magic player. You know, I'm tr always trying to, and you know, like I'm having a blast. But I'm having a blast because I'm trying to figure out every possible thing that could go wrong. <laughs> you know, and that's funny. When I play Stance about cast, I feel like nothing can go wrong. <laughs> that's great. Um, so a couple of updates from our side tables as well. Godanis Vidigiris has won his first game against Derek Rada. And uh, Jacob Wilson fans rejoice. He's up a game against Matthew Bartley as well. Both of those players, in fact, all four of those players, playing for a chance to play a win in the next round. They're all X2. Again, the match that we're watching right now as we approach game three. This is elimination, effectively. It's not literal. They get to play the last round, and they're technically still alive. But for all intents and purposes, you're not making the top eight with an X and three record in a 1,600-plus player field. So you are not. This is win or go sulk to your next match and then go home. Yes. You get to play another match of Magic, though. Yeah. Consolation could, Magic. Could be worse. And also, of course, they're playing for pro points and, and money in that last match, so it, mm -hmm. it really matters. But we know. Oh, you won hurts. GPs, you know, like both of these gentlemen have? Yeah. I know. You're, you're, you got your eyes on the prize. You're looking for a trophy. Trophies is just the best. It's interesting. Players are examining their openers. I believe that Alex is kept and Daniel is tanked. Keep, keep, here we go. Let's see who gets to stay alive and try to fight another day and who is going to have to go home disappointed here. Alexander Haynes starting off with both colors of land this time and a soul summons as well. So a much better start for him even just at turn two here. Jaquetti off to a little bit slower of a start with apparently no white mana yet. It just and found a third island, but 
Not ideal. This could be a quick one back in Alexander Haynes' direction if he has a draw similar to the one he had last time, where he was able to get just a little bit ahead on board and then capitalize on that advantage over and over again. This is going to be... But no third land there for Alex. All right, that's not bad, though. Updraft Elemental. That'll hold off the, fort, the, the fray a little bit here, at least. No third land for Alex until now. Wow, if he missed a land drop there, it could have got out of hand pretty quickly, too. This is a volatile game in the early stages, and he's attacking. Chiquetti's having none of it. He snaps off the block. And good block for Daniel there as uh, the only play as a follow-up. Dromica's captain there for Alexander Hain. No white mana for Chiquetti. We saw how long he waited to keep that hand. Now we see why. He's going to get to play a Misfire Adept here, so the curve continues, but this could get ugly. And real fast. Oh, fourth land here for Alex. Pretty nice draw stuff. So he goes land, land, no land, 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 and uh, he's going to keep things flowing. I guess it looks like Alex had like the two, three, four configuration. He just didn't have the third or fourth land on time. One turn behind now. So he's going two, nothing, three, four. And uh, he's going to attack with the captain quite boldly. Chiquetti's trying to decide if he wants to force a real trick or just absorb the damage. He doesn't want to lose one of his best creatures, but uh, War Flare again. And, you know, Chiquetti knew that that could be an, op an option here. He's going to use it to kill the Misfire Adept. Oh, and there's a Planes off the top for Daniel. So this is a big draw for him. I don't think it could have come much later than this to have him stay in the game. Even at this rate, he's only going to be able to play one white spell a turn. Yeah, I mean, his hand is all white spells, Yeah, if I can read it correctly. Yeah, I think he's also maybe got an Ojitai Monument down there, but... He is going to start deploying at least one spell there. Some of the spells that it looked like he had in hand were not the most exciting of cards. Others were absolutely among the most exciting of cards. You see an Artful Maneuver, a Sandstorm Charger. Artful Maneuver, pretty risky. Uh, not too bad against uh, when you have a one forward play. See Myth Realize there. And he's just going to go ahead and play the Myth Realized, which seems a little odd because it doesn't affect the board at all. Wow. That must not have been a uh, Ojitai monument that I saw then, right? Because he would have played that. It was, he, he's got Silk Wrap, Light Walker, Artful Maneuver in here. Meanwhile, he's getting beaten down here. Looking to just take two this turn, and uh, both players shrug, so he's just going to drop down to 16. What's the follow-up play here for Hain? Now what's he got? Sabretooth Ooh. Outrider for Hain. That's so good. It's a sweet one. It's a good card. Chiquetti really trying to set up this whole Myth Realize thing. He's going to get a counter on it here by using Silk Wrap to take down the Dromax Captain, so you can see where his plan went. He knew he could still block and get that captain up to three, and that's the last window he had to get Silk Wrap down. But he does, and now he's got Myth Realized with a, with a counter on it. And, uh, you know, if he can deploy the rest of his hand, he'll probably end up with a 3-3 three, three or a 4-4 four, four Myth Realized. He can start activating down the line. Right now, though, he's, he's gonna stuck. He's going to need some more white mana, Yeah, though. he's stuck right now. Yeah. yeah, finding a planes on top for Chiquetti would be a pretty big game at this point. They can start activating the Myth Realized multiple turns to turn. Haynes had kind of a clunky draw too, so that makes the Myth Realized better because it means the game would go longer. But as it is now, both players have their mana so tied up, even though they're in these later stages of the game, that we're likely not going to see much of that. Alex is going to have to work his way up to Formidable real quick.
pacifism on updraft elemental, the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> and here we ever. go. The beatdowns will commence. That's going to get him up to formidable, which is why Alex decided to play as more pre-combat, something you don't usually see from professional players. But it makes sense here just in case, and he's going to get in there for six damage and drop Chiquetti down to ten. And was that a sandblast off the top for Chiquetti? It was, which is pretty nice. But again, it's another white spell, so it doesn't. It means he's still not going to be able to double spell at any point. Although. I don't think he could be too upset about finding a card that's going to stem the bleeding a little bit. Eh. Yeah, but his life total is falling fast, isn't it, Jake? Yeah, and the problem is, is that every time he casts one card, the trades with one of Alex's cards, Alex, repla Alex replaces that card on the board and then keeps bashing him with the other creatures he already has in play. Yeah, he's just too so, far ahead at this point. Yeah, I mean, Daniel gets to use that Sandblast, he goes to six anyway. Then Alex, you know, plays another threat. If Alex happens to have some sort of, like, boom boom underneath that manifest or that morph then suddenly daniel's clock could be reduced very 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 quickly. yeah i mean the the scenario you just described where daniel falls to six after using sandblast is actually his best case <laughs> yeah. right like that's that's what he hopes happens and that's not a great spot to be in so see how he decides to uh maneuver this scenario it is going to be difficult for him Keeping the no planes has come back to bite him a bit. He did finally find one, but just one, and he's now staring at five white cards in his hand and only able to deploy one at a time. Playing the myth realized he was hoping to get some counters flowing on that. That has not worked out for him. You know, he was really hoping that that would be a thing. And look at this vault breaker with dash now. And he says, come at me. Vault yeah. breaker gets activated. Mountain hits the bin for Hain. And there's Sandblast to take down the Outrider. But in the meantime, seven he takes nine and goes to one. And I do not see how Chiquetti is going to get out of this mess. Especially that flyer on the other end of the table. He only has one white mana. And also a dash creature in hand for Hain, so that any type of sweeper wouldn't be good enough here. And we know Chiquetti's hand. He can't, he can't play a sweeper next turn. Yeah, you know, I think going back to playing the myth realized earlier and trying to get that thing going, he needed to just go affect the board, affect the board, affect the board, affect the board, and then worry about myth realized later. Now, it gets a lot worse. It does. Absolutely. And, th I mean, the major issue is that he's choked on white. Right. But I, he had to sort of plan on that happening. He's got... Uh, yeah, he could have just continually affected the board as opposed to playing an enchantment that doesn't really... Right. And I think he was thing. thinking long game because he knew he was going to silk wrap the next turn and get a counter on it. But, unfortunately, uh, he never was able to find another white mana. And now he's fallen woefully behind here. And he's basically given up the game here, right? The yeah, I mean, Mr. Karen just, just kills him. He gets attacked by the flyer, and then his match ends. Yeah. And that's going to do it. Alexander Hain defeats Daniel Chiquetti. And I, did you see him just point at the myth realize yeah, there? Being like, I don't know if this is and he point. shook his head. Yeah. yeah, I think he's explaining what his thought process was about how he wanted to go, but. If he fast forwarded to not finding any planes, then you know you could see where that where that ended up going. Also, he kept drawing white cards. You can see a it little looks like frustration. Looks like that was mostly white, though. To be fair. Mm -hmm. All right, here's Go Dennis Vidigiris versus Derek Rada. Go and Derek are tied at a game apiece, and it looks like we're in the middle-ish stages here. Sandstorm Charger is going to get flipped up and eat a token of some sort. What do you think of the common morph cycle for each color? Mediocre. They're all, they're all yeah, you making can my them. deck most of the time. Yeah, me too. C to C plus range, you know. Interceptor is just C, C plus range? Yeah. Really? That doesn't yeah, get a B? Uh-uh, I, I went down a little on that one. I, at first uh -huh. I had it higher and I, I've gone down a little bit on it. Uh, I mean, that card is... It's totally fine. You play it, yeah. you know. It's making your blue decks for me. But like I mean, Sandstorm Charger, I think, is in the same... 
think maybe you need to play it unmorphed more often. I think you might be more. Impressed. I started doing that early too. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I just ran into too many. Uh, Twin bolts early outcasts. on. Outcasts. Oh yeah, yeah. You get I don't blown know. Out by that a lot. It could have just actually, been a timing thing. I'm often blue red, and I rarely play against other red drafters. Mm. I end up blue red in most weird. formats. Yeah, I know. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> That's also true. That is <laughs> That's true. not what I said. <laughs> All right, dragon fodder here for Godenis Vidigiris. He's going to get a trigger off of the Jeskai Sage. Guy Sage. And what is he going to do? Race here? What is going on? He's facing down a 4 5 Sandstorm Charger. And the Avon Tacticians got three power. And the race is on. Oh, wow, nice turn here for Godenis, though. That was great. He has a formidable Sabretooth Outrider. Oh, Godin is almost snap locked. He's trying to decide if he wants to pile a Goblin and an Outrider or two Goblins and an Outrider on that Charger. It's got five toughness, so he technically only needs one Goblin and the Outrider, but He's worried. Let's say he's just taking a look to see what would happen. Most of the removal yeah. that Derek can have would kill the Outrider anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like... Ah, he's decided just to chump block. Maybe this is a race after all. Godennis is going to take three in the air. And Erish and Cleric's going to change any race math that was going on there as Derek Rada jumps back up to 16. He's got a Likely blocker. Likely a now. sideboard card from Derek. Um, yeah. One thing that's nice about a card like that is that when your opponent has cards like Dragon Fodder and Jeskai Sage, then bringing in a 1-3 that gains you life, so a lot of value there. Let's check it out real quick, because this... Uh... Oh no, it's in the main deck, the Russian Clark. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Yeah. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. There are enough X ones. You don't have to like, be happy about it. That's not yeah, a requirement. Yeah, cards like Hand of Silmgar have made that card a little bit better, especially like when you have a lot of flyers to go with it. It's totally true. It has it has actually improved. I think it's significantly better than it was. I still don't like playing. But I still don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's a Goblin heel cutter now for Go Dennis, who looks Ooh. like he's lining up a massive attack here. That's not small. That's ten. Bang. That thing can't block either. So. This would be the full 10. I wonder if Derek's got a removal spell here. Sandblast would take care of something. Probably the heel cutter, honestly. What does that do? All right, it's Enduring Victory. Does he have enough mana for that? Maybe it's not Enduring. It's not. It's Surge, Surge. of Righteousness to take down the heel cutter. So that's five damage instead that he's taking. as he's going to gain two life from Surge. Then he's going to get some good blocks. Oh, no, he can't. No blocks. No blocks. Yeah, the Russian card can't not block because of the heal Yeah, that, he, he had to wait yeah, until so it was attacking to cast Surge of Righteousness, which yeah. is a little unfortunate for him because it doesn't mean he's taking extra damage to the tune of five. He gained some of it back, puts him to 11. Even Tactician, uh, currently a 3-6 flyer. And a whisk away here as well. On the Avon Tactician, he's chump blocking with Jeskai Sage to draw a card and save a decent amount of life here as well. And what's the follow-up? Whoa, Erish and Sovereign. That's a big boy. Yeah, 6-6 six, six flyer, 7 mana. That's when it dies, too. you can put it on the top or bottom of your library. But that part's less important at the moment than the whole 6-6 six, six flying thing. And that is really going to shore up this board if Godennis can't find a way to, uh, to interact with it. It's quite a difficult card to interact with. And Godennis is at 12, too. So this is you could lose some a two-turn attack. Yeah. He's really coming to the wire here in this match. Another Gurmog Drowner. I like what Godennis is doing here. He's sacrificing... Of course you do. 
one ones for value and turning them into real cards here. Go Dennis has like to make a decision there. out of the top four cards of his library thanks to that drowner. It's got to be something good and it has to happen quickly because that Sovereign is going to kill him. That's going to kill him in two turns like you said a minute ago, Jake. It is just going to clean up this game. These players are tied at one game apiece, both with an 11-2 and two record, meaning that the loser of this match is incredibly unlikely to make top eight, and the winner puts themselves in a position to play the next round and make it into the top eight, maybe even draw, depending on how things go. Yeah, it depends how their breakers look, but there's yeah. a decent possibility that they just might be able to draw into this top eight right now. Another update from our back table as this one winds down. Jacob Wilson won his oh. match. Wow. Yeah. So this top eight still shaping up to be. Oh, yes. One for the ages. This is no joke. Last Atlantic City was a good one, too. This city gives us good Grand Prix. Last time we had Ocho in top eight. Raptor was also in top eight. I think John Stern won the last one, if I remember correctly. He did. You are correct. With a fan favorite, by the way, Hexproof. You're right. That's definitely a fan favorite, it is. right? It is. Does that count? It's a fan favorite? So Dennis is counting. So Dennis is a Pro Tour finalist. Derek Rada, no, he's not. Derek Rada, not a Pro Tour finalist, to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge either. He may be one in the future. <laughs> All right, so Tail Slash just took down Erish and Cleric here. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. And goes lining up an attack. Look at this. I'll block. Take two, go to nine. This is interesting. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the line is. So I think that Godennis has volcanic vision in his hand. But right now he's taking 10 and going to two. He's tapped out, so he can, he can consider blocking here if he wants to play around a card like Artful Maneuver or Tread Upon. But he doesn't. He falls down to two, and the turn gets passed to him. That's Volcanic Ooh. Vision. What is he getting back? That's a pretty good it's one. It's a plant, plant form. form, which got flipped by the Deceiver much earlier. Wow, so he's going to attack for four here. And he's trying to set up the win because now the Erish and Sovereign's not going to get it done. If Derek taps out for that, Godennis is going to pick up his own copy of it, attack for two and four on the ground, and have his own fly, you know, six six flyer that must be blocked. So this <laughs> this is a sick line from Godennis. It's exiled, right? No, it's returned. Yeah, Volcanic Vision is very powerful. It is. It's seven mana, it's clunky, it's tough to get going. You need to have an instant or sorcery of relatively high cost, like at least three, you know, it would be good in, in your graveyard. But when you do fire that off and you have those things lined up, it rewards you. It's very, very powerful. Yeah, it's it's oftentimes, you know, a kick to Mizium Mortis, it's often drawing you a card. Yep. Sometimes it's even better than that. Yeah, and it's drawing, I mean, look at that. It drew him to plant form here. Wiped away his opponent's board. Yeah, and it, his, his hand doesn't even look that bad. So that's a Sun Striker, I believe, uh, that's face down there for Derek. Interesting to see if, if Godennis just says, you know what, get that thing out of the way. Attack you for four, put you to one. I have a morph. Yeah, he's doing it. Supplant form, target the morph. It is a Sun Striker. But he just gets a 2-2 a two, two nothing creature. Yeah, and, and at this point it's kind of like... Well, he's got him down to one now, and that's going to do it. Godennis Vidakiris keeps his dream alive here. 
He's going to go to 12 and 2. Derek Rada is going to have to settle for one step worse than that, but still looking for a strong finish from him. But Go finds the line, gets the job done, and is one match away from the top eight and maybe could draw. Like, you never quite know. It depends.